Good evening, my name is Dante, and welcome back to my channel. On this channel, I discuss some of my favorite topics, such as dark and heavy music, horror films, true crime, and various creepy media I find on the internet. Tonight I'll be talking about Holly Ellsworth Clark, a Canadian singer-songwriter who mysteriously disappeared and was later found deceased in 2020. Holly's story is one I discovered several years ago when it was still a missing persons case and has continued to resonate with me to this day. Before we start, though, I would like to make a few disclaimers. The case of Holly's disappearance and death has been covered extensively throughout the true crime community. However, I took to this case in particular because of Holly's music. So I'll be doing a bit of an overview and skimming over some of the finer, more speculative details of the case itself, and then I'll be taking some time to discuss her band and the music that was released in the midst of her disappearance. If you would like to hear a more thorough report on Holly's disappearance and death, I would highly recommend checking out the videos by YouTube creators Stephanie Harlow and Rachel Shannon. Both creators did excellent work in discussing Holly as well as giving their own personal theories on what they believe happened to her. In this video, I'm going to be sticking more so just to the surface level facts of what we know and then delving into her work as a musician. I'll do my best to be as accurate as possible and include all of the major pieces of the case, but there were some conflicting details between some of the sources that I've gone through. If I miss anything or get anything wrong, please feel free to correct me in the comments. Lastly, I don't know if YouTube will allow me to play Holly's music or the audio evidence that's relevant to her case. If I'm not able to play them in this video itself, I'll be linking them in the description below. Anyhow, let's talk a bit about Holly Ellsworth Clark. Holly was born November 24th, 1992 in Clarenville, Newfoundland, and spent most of her upbringing in Calgary, Alberta with her parents and two siblings. Standing at a towering six foot one with a fierce competitive spirit, she excelled as an athlete. Holly attended the University of Calgary and was a dedicated member of the wrestling team. She won three gold medals and one silver for the Canadian Inter-University Sports, or CIS, National Championships, as well as one gold representing Canada in the Junior Pan American Championships of 2014. Holly received her bachelor's degree from the university in 2016 with an honors in political science. Around this time, she started to pick up guitar after learning a few chords from her father. In no time, she began writing her own music, playing local gigs and open mic nights. Between 2017 and 2018, Holly recorded two solo releases. The first was an EP called Little Blue House, which she uploaded to SoundCloud. The second was a three-track demo called Love Songs and Hate Alongs, which she uploaded to Bandcamp. These songs present a lo-fi, stripped-down depiction of Holly's music at its core. A feisty, yearning, low-range voice crooning and shouting over semi-distorted guitar chords. In 2018, Holly moved to Toronto to form a band known as Deep Bite, in which she was the singer, rhythm guitarist, and primary songwriter. The music of Deep Bite was a laid-back yet gritty form of indie and alternative rock. In their song, a bluesy haze sits on a blend of steady, loose drumming, gloomy clean guitars, and Holly's sultry alto range. The trio recorded a jam session of their songs in late 2019, as well as a video session of them performing a few of these tracks. The sound of the raw DIY recording paints a picture of a smoky nightclub with dim lighting on a summer's evening. Though the nature of the performance is unrefined, its delivery feels extremely honest and intimate. Holly herself described her music as a mix of Velvet Underground and 90s grunge, which feels like an apt comparison. I myself hear slight tinges of some PJ Harvey in the mix as well, though the smooth and psychedelic shades of the guitar work really gave the band a sound of their own. Deep Bite disbanded after only a year of activity, as Holly was in a relationship with the band's lead guitarist Randy and the two had decided to split up. The drummer of the band Andrew lived in Hamilton, Ontario, and Holly ultimately decided to move out there to try to pursue a relationship with him. Unfortunately, this relationship also did not pan out. However, Holly was able to find a room to rent in Hamilton that she liked, so she decided to get settled in there. At this point, Holly was working remotely for a condo management company while continuing to plan her next steps as a musician. It was January of 2020 that things seemed to take sort of a dark turn. At 8am the morning of January 10th, one of Holly's roommates was woken up to Holly shattering a window in their living room to get into the house. This was followed shortly after by Holly frantically calling her parents, in which she told them she had been chased by two men through the woods all night and desperately wanted to go back to Calgary. Holly was inconsolable, and her parents got the impression that she wasn't in a good place mentally. What her parents didn't notice until weeks later was that prior to this call, Holly had also left them a voicemail, again asking for a plane ticket back to Calgary, in which she sounded as though she was in severe distress. Um, I would really like a plane ticket out of Hamilton. Um... I'd really, really, really like a plane ticket out of Hamilton. 
to Calgary, please. And I would like to come home and visit you and Dave. I'm missing you so much. And I love you so much. So that's that's all I want in the world is to see you and Dave. Because I love you both so, 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 so much. So, um... Uh, if you could please, um, uh, if you could please help me out with a, a plane ticket, that would be, that would be really, really greatly appreciated. Over the course of that day, Holly's sister Kate stayed with her for several hours, to which it became very clear to Kate that Holly was struggling mentally and needed help. Later that day, Holly's brother Caleb tried to check in on her, but she refused to speak with him and wouldn't let anybody into her room. Police were called to do a wellness check, but when they arrived, Holly stated that she was fine and just wanted to be left alone. Eventually, Holly let her housemates into her room and they spent the rest of that night making art, drinking tea, and meditating. Holly's parents planned on flying her back to Calgary with her brother Caleb and they'd be leaving on the 12th. Unfortunately, this ultimately would not pan out. The day of the 11th, Holly's roommate stated that Holly attempted to scale the fence outside of their home, which had been caught on video surveillance. This was then followed by Holly trying to break into the furnace room downstairs, which is where the video surveillance was. Holly's roommate stopped her from trying to get into the room, which led to Holly leaving the house around 4 p.m. She didn't take her phone or wallet and didn't tell anybody where she was going. A second piece of video footage would capture Holly after she left the house, this time showing her walking down the street in the rain, carrying a trash bag and also wearing a trash bag as some sort of poncho. When she hadn't returned after a few hours, Holly's loved ones became extremely concerned and ultimately reported her as a missing person. This would lead to an extensive and grueling search for Holly that would last eight months. Holly's friends, family, and Hamilton police reached out to the community and went to the greatest lengths they could to try to find the missing woman. Ground searches, posters, social media outreach, tip lines, and practically any method they could think of getting Holly's name and face out there were attempted. However, all of these efforts would lead to dead ends. Although there were some supposed sightings and tips of Holly's whereabouts, my understanding is that none of these were ever confirmed to be of Holly herself. I point that out not to negate the validity of what those witnesses may have seen, but rather to simply state that we have nothing on record that confirms 100% the person they saw was indeed Holly. Tragically, Holly's remains were found September 8th of 2020, floating in Hamilton Harbor at Pier 11. Because her body had been in the water for an extended period of time, she was heavily decomposed. Her body was sent to the forensics lab and identified, though because of her state of decomposition, a cause of death could not be determined. On September 10th, the Hamilton police released a statement officially identifying Holly and stating that they did not feel her death was under suspicious circumstances. Holly's family requested Ontario's chief pathologist perform a second autopsy for further review, but unfortunately this did not prompt further results. The biggest takeaways were that Holly did not have drugs in her system and no major signs of trauma could be found on her. Her legs were missing, but it's believed that this was caused by her remains being hit by a boat, causing the limbs to separate. How and when she died are still unknown, and it isn't known if she died in the water or not. In the articles I've read, Holly's family believed this to be an accidental drowning. Holly was known to take cold plunges in glacial water, and they theorized that she may have gone into the lake as a means of trying to self-soothe at a time when she felt distressed. Ultimately, in regards to what happened to Holly and the events leading up to her death, we're only left with more questions than answers. While many have formed their own speculation and theories on what they believe happened, I'm instead going to take this time to shift to the legacy that Holly left behind. As I stated earlier in the video, Holly had released two solo EPs online as well as played in a band known as Deep Bite, who she played with in Toronto for about a year. In the time she was with Deep Bite, they recorded a full jam session of their songs as well as a video session of them performing some of these tracks. A producer and musician in Calgary by the name of Kirill Telichev had known Holly from the time that they were kids in 2001. Telichev had worked with mixing and producing some of Holly's music from the time that she was going solo. In the midst of her disappearance, Holly's family reached out to him to have him edit, mix, and master this material that Deep Bite recorded. This led to the digital release of an 11-track album from this session, which was uploaded to Bandcamp. Listening to the album itself, you experience a very heartwarming audio portrait of Holly doing one of the things that she loved most. There's a warm, summery shimmer to the hazy guitars with tinges of psych rock solos and grungy bouts of aggression. 
Holly's voice alternates between a smoky, deep whisper to raspy, shouted refrains in juxtaposition with this mix of smooth and noisy accompaniments. Buried slightly in the mix with a touch of distortion and reverb, the passion and grit in her voice can really be felt in each track. There's a sense of longing, loneliness, and even nostalgia in these songs. Though it's a bit hard to make out the lyrics in the recording, it feels as though Holly is singing of simpler times or a past lover that she's reminiscing on. A podcast known as The Underground Listener did an interview with Holly in 2019, in which Holly describes the lyrical themes of her music as feeling discomfort and that she isn't being honest with something in her life and is attempting to mine that feeling that her music stems from something she feels she needs to say or express internally. So what we're hearing is really Holly expressing herself in a way that she felt conveyed those emotions better than anything else. Between the tracks, you can hear brief laughter or Holly rejoicing at them getting a good take. These brief moments of camaraderie among the trio remind you that you're listening to a jam session between friends. So there's a sort of coziness and familiarity upon listening to these tracks and knowing the joy that Holly got out of creating and performing. Alongside the posthumous release of this material, the University of Calgary also launched a scholarship in Holly's honor. The Holly Ellsworth Clark Memorial Scholarship Fund was created in late 2020 to help fund the tuition and fees for other student athletes at the university, remembering and celebrating Holly for her skills as a wrestler at the school. To give some closing thoughts, I just wanted to say that Holly's story is one that I find extremely touching. There's a lot about her that I could relate to. She was in her late 20s, she was a musician, she moved away from home to chase her dreams. She had to cope with her band splitting up on top of heartbreak and still held down a day job while she continued to pursue her dreams. All of those elements are things that apply to me as well as many other young musicians I've come to know in my personal life. Anyway, I really hope that Holly's loved ones are at peace and have been able to find some consolation in her legacy. Though I can't speak on Holly's behalf, I would like to think she would feel proud of her music being out there. Deep Bite's album is available on Bandcamp, while their live performance at Crystal Beach can also be found on Spotify and Apple Music, as well as watched here on YouTube. I'll be putting all the links to Holly's music below and greatly encourage you to check it out and give it a listen. So that concludes the story of Holly Ellsworth Clark for now. While it's obviously not the happiest chain of events, her tribute is absolutely beautiful and deserves to be recognized. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm also active on TikTok and Instagram, so if you would like to support my content or send me music or topics that you would like to see me cover, you can reach me there as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your evening. What's this pill you slipped into my cup? Alone for days, for weeks, since you drugged.